something you had an operation. Oh my like you god. You didn't do. Oh. You were a little devil. Yeah. You oh, were, my I, mother was such a prankster. Yeah. Oh, she got us all the time too, boy. When I uh, when I um after I had Susan, you know, the doctor um uh said you you uh, can't have any more children. Uh, but uh, the doctor was Catholic and I was Catholic, so they wouldn't let them, you know, tie my tubes or anything. But uh, I had I had an awful time too, and afterwards the doctor came to see me and he said, "Now he said you're all wired up like a piano," and he said you can't have any more children. So I said, "Boy, that's a fine thing." I said, "Why didn't you let them, you know, fix me?" Because uh, I said uh, he said he told me if I had any more children it would kill me, and I said. Uh, well, I want to live to take care of the ones I have. But anyhow, I used to, uh, one time when I lived in Norfolk, I had a, a girdle and it had a stay, one of those wire stays in it, you know. And uh, I had mentioned to the kids that I was wired like a piano. And if they ever took an x-ray on me, I'd look just like a piano or something. But anyhow, one of those stays started sticking me. And so I sat pulling out and I said, Oh, look, the wire. The <laughs> wires are coming loose. And, our and I pulled so it, big. and the poor kids, they almost died. Oh, mommy, mommy, what's the matter? What's the matter? You know? <laughs> and finally, I had to tell them it was a joke because they were crying. They thought I was going to die or something with this big old wire oh, thing coming out of me. You were such a big. And then the time you dressed this up like packages for Christmas. Oh, yeah. And, and sing the uh, song. Oh, yeah. We were in the nursing home business, you know. and. I used to put on little shows for the people, and I dressed Wayne up as Santa Claus, and my father had bought me this real pretty sleigh, and we put a whole lot of boxes in there, and I dressed the kids up, uh, Maureen and Susan, like little packages, you know. And we went to, uh, uh, I taught them to sing, uh, for dear old Santa, we give three cheers. He'll soon be coming with a swift rain, dears, and he comes so swift with a in the early Christmas morning. And then uh, they'd pass out the packages and then they'd sing this song. Do not open before Christmas. Read the little sign on me. Do not open before Christmas. Are oh, you very sorry be? If you peek, if you shake, you might harm you might break. Do not open before Christmas. Read the little sign on me. And oh, we had fun, you know, at the nursing home. I'd swing all the patients around in the wheelchairs and dance with them and the kids would play with them and we had a good time there. Now what else? Oh, my voice is so, oh, getting so bad. Oh, let's some of the songs. You, what did you sing to us when we were kids? Oh. Mommy loves his baby, loves her all the world. She's a mommy's baby, mommy's little girl. Oh, I can't remember right this minute to think of all the things that all I right, said. What about um, what else? When I wake up. In, oh yeah, and I used to sing. In the morning when I wake up with the cross, I sign myself and say, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I give you my heart and soul. Come what along up? home. Oh, yeah. And then at night when I put him to bed, I used to say, Now run along home and jump into bed. Say your prayers and cover your head. A very good night, I'll say unto you. You dream of me and I'll dream of you. Boop, boop. And I can't think, um, what else can you think of any? Um, oh, I did all this stuff for Patricia one time. I told her all that stuff. I met one time she was visiting. She she did a tape and she asked me to say all these things that I used to say to you kids. You, well, I've been asking you to do well, this for years. Yeah, but she did it. She taped it there and she said, say this and say that. And I, I can't think of uh, what, uh, what other things that I used to say and do. Oh, what did you? Uh, you know, I'm a sick, used to call sick right this. now. What did you call? Oh, this? yeah, when I lived in, uh, when I lived in Alabama, you know, we had uh, intercom system, you know, 
And uh, every morning I'd call my children, wake up my little jewels. Come on, Ruby, come on, Opal, come on, Diamond, wake up there. Sapphire, huh? Yeah, and all that. So I'd call them all different names of jewels, you know, but I always say, wake up my little jewels. And what did Wayne uh, do when he was, one time he took him, name the places that we lived. Let's oh. When uh, I was born. Let's uh, uh, Maureen was, uh, Wayne was born in Fort Worth, Texas. Maureen was born in Portsmouth, Virginia. And Susan was born in Bethesda, yeah. Maryland. And um, we lived in Rhode Island. Uh, that was uh, Maureen. I had just had Maureen and Susie when we lived there. We lived in the housing, uh, Navy housing there, and uh, Paul built a little fence outside, and uh, I used to put them in there, and they play real good, and uh, oh, I'm trying, I can't think. You'd say, now, it's you, you know, Mommy can't run out there. Oh, yeah, you know, I I tell them, you know, you got to be nice and play here because Mommy can't run that fast after you, and they... They always did. They were they were very good. And the lady used to next door used to say, "Oh, Marie, you talk so nice to your children." And uh, what would you say to us? Oh, I don't know what I'd say, but just sitting out there talking with you, and you'd be playing heavens. I can't remember what I said, but um, uh, when I lived in San Francisco, I just uh, oh, I had Wayne and Maureen, and uh, we lived down on the. Oh, I can't think of the name of the downtown in a Quonset hut. Uh, Paul was on a ship. And uh, we, uh, I had lived there years before in Daly City. And I took the children out to see this lady that I lived with. And she asked John, uh, I mean, she, <laughs> she asked Wayne what he would like to drink. He said, uh, may I please have seven pup? He wanted seven up. They used to call it seven pup, you know. And uh, of course, everybody used to make over Maureen. And uh, a lot of Paul's friends used to come to the house and we'd play canasta. And this one guy came and he said, You know, I feel sorry for little boys. He said, Everybody makes over the girls. So they don't fuss about the little boys. And he had two eyes tattooed on his knees. And he used to pull up his pant legs and jiggle them, you know, and wait to get a a big kick out of that. He laughed like crazy. And uh, one other time, uh, when Wayne was about two, we lived in Portsmouth, and uh, he uh, there was a band playing, and Wayne went up, and the man let him lead the band, you know, and oh, what a, he was a cute little rascal. That, well, I didn't have you then. That was no, before, was too. that was before you were born. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he just, uh, was the center of attraction. And what else? So, uh, Fort Smith and you lived in Massachusetts. New Orleans, New Orleans yes. Uh -huh. Where did we live and in New Orleans, Lydell? No, we lived in Algiers. Uh -huh. Yeah, we lived in, uh, well, I lived in New Orleans. We were there twice. I lived there once in New Orleans. And then when I had you and Wayne, we lived, uh, we bought a house over in Algiers. And uh, Wayne was our, I mean, the Avalonis were our next door neighbors. And, um, oh God, one time I had I had you kids, we were at Maison Blancs. I had the three of you. And, oh, we were going down the escalator or something, and I don't quite remember what happened. I went to save one of you. You were uh, getting, I thought you were going to get stuck or something. I don't know whether you kind of fell. And anyhow, I ran. I tried to save you, and Wayne was at the top, and Susan was there in the carriage. No, no, she wasn't in the carriage either. She was there, and she was a, uh, she must have, she was a little thing. But anyhow, it ended up that I kind of fell, and we went down on the escalator, and you, and uh, Susan was up top, I guess with Wayne, and I kept saying, stay there, stay there, and People all came around and they took care of you a lot. So I've been afraid of, kind of afraid of escalators ever since. What else? Um, what little cute thing did I do as a child? Anything? Oh. Oh yeah, you, uh, you'd every place we go, you'd run out and say, 
Hi, my name's Maureen. Let's play, you know. And uh, uh, you were a very good, but you know, sometimes you'd uh, uh, be a little uh, rambunctious and I'd have to tell you to go sit in the chair. We had little rocking chairs made for you. And uh, you'd sit there, but you had a hard time staying still sometimes. You'd sit in the chair and behave. I can't say that you ever, you kids ever gave me any trouble when you were small. I, it's just amazing, but I, I think, you know, I was having a lot of health problems, and I think the good Lord made you exceptionally well for me or something. See that? We were wonderful kids. We were just darling. So, let's see. And then Susan now, came along. Well, I told you about Susan, you know. Your father was going to school there. What, what else do you want me to tell you? Let's see. Oh, um, go back and you can talk about Dad and how you met him. Yeah. I, I told you all that? that, yeah. You told me that on the last day. But anyhow, the first time your father saw me, he went around and uh, I hate to talk about him now. I feel so bad. But he went around and told everybody he met the girl he was going to marry. And on a you know, he asked, I was with another girl, and he asked her for a date, and uh, uh, so she said, okay, uh, Tuesday night, and he said, uh, is it all right if I bring along a fellow for your girlfriend? That was me, and uh, I said, okay. So anyhow, after we left there, her her father had it was one of Paul's patients, and after we left there, I said, oh, we have a date for that night. And she said, well, I don't know how to get in touch with him. So I said, well, to tell him that we have a date. She said, well, I'll tell my mother to tell him uh, to come at some other time or, uh, you know, tell her that we're sorry we had to go out. So anyhow, we went out on that date, and then we came home. And uh, we asked her mother if he had shown up, and she said no. So I thought, oh, what a guy, you know. But anyhow, um, I was over at the Naval Hospital again, uh, visiting uh, this friend of mine who had a baby over there. And uh, I started to walk, there was a big long flight of stairs, you had to walk down the hospital, it was up on a hill. And I started to walk down the stairs to get the bus. And lo and behold, who should come along but Paul. So I said, huh, you're a fine guy making a date and breaking it. And he said, well, he said, I couldn't get a fellow for your girlfriend. I said, the guy was supposed to be for me. He said, oh, I just said that, but I was going to, you know, take you. And so he said, uh, uh, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He said, do you mind if I ride home with you? And I said, oh, public service. I can't stop you from riding on the bus. I was real kind of mean, you know. And uh, so uh, I did say that uh, about him, uh, you know, getting the girl for somebody else. But anyhow, uh, so I didn't even invite him in. He rode and we stood outside and talked. And he, uh, I gave him my telephone number. And uh, he said, well, can I call you sometime? And I said, sure. So he, anyhow, he called me and he said, uh, I have this friend that has a car. And his name is John Shukas. And he said, could you get a date for him? So I said, sure. So I got Dot Hayden for him. And we went out on a date, and we went to Revere Beach. And uh, so, you know, they had a lot of rides and things down there. And so uh, Paul said, well, I'd like to buy you a souvenir. So I said, okay. So we went in this store, and he bought me, uh, you know, a little pin with, I still have it. It's up on my wall uh, in, a, in a collage that Susan made. And it had Marie and Paul, and then a little, uh, chain, you know, with a key on it. And uh, so then, as we were coming out, uh, he said to the man, do you have any wedding rings? And I said, oh, wedding rings? I said, uh, are you crazy? And he said, no, you know, uh, I want to buy you a wedding ring. And so I thought, oh, well, I'll go along with this little gag. So She wants to give you a kiss. Huh. Okay, that's here, a good Mary. kiss. Okay. You're a good kisser. Okay. She's a kisser. So anyhow, the, you know, they were just plain gold bands, so I'm putting them on and holding my hand up and everything. And I said, 
Oh, these are nice, but you know, I want one with diamonds in it, like I have now. And so your father said, well, okay, uh, we'll go in town tomorrow and I'll buy you a diamond band. And I thought, oh boy, this guy's really gone. So when I went outside, I said to Dot Hayden, you know what this guy had me doing, trying on wedding rings. And uh, I said, I think he's kind of delirious. He said, no, I'm serious. And um, so anyhow, uh, you know, he hadn't even proposed to me then. But, you know, later on that night, he did propose. He got down on his knee and all that stuff. And um, so he bought me an engagement ring. Do I? Yeah, let me see those rings you got on now. Hold them up to your camera and show us. What is now, it? one of these is uh, your father's uh, wedding ring, and the other is my father's wedding ring. And, then the and that's in the that. Middle. And this one here. Wait, is, the diamonds in the middle. And the diamonds, uh, that's. Uh, uh, a wedding, my band, this isn't my original band, your father bought me this uh, on my 25th anniversary and somebody stole my original diamond ring and the other wedding ring, I had it in a jewelry box and we were moving, somebody took it and this is a ring that Maureen had made in Hawaii and see it spins around and everything and this is another ring that she had made someplace uh, Oh, what a favorite child she yeah, must be yeah, to Yeah, look at all, of the, all this jewelry she's You know, I don't know cheese at one and chalk at the no, other. No, that's what I used to say. But now we yeah. say I'm the favorite child. All right. Can you turn that off a minute or? Oh, you want a minute or to... This is the 22nd of July, 1995. Okay, what do you have to say to your boy? These are my kitty cats. And, and what's the name of this one? White cat and color cat. White cat and color cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give your okay. Bonoy a kiss. Bye. Hi. Bye. Hi, goodbye. Uh, did I get lipstick on you? I Mom, let's go back to the polio days and how, what your family was like, what it was like being raised in a family of eight kids. Well, uh, as you know, I uh, was stricken with polio when I was 18 months old. And my mother and father did everything and tried everything they could to help me. Um, my mother heard that if you boil the marrow from soup bones, that that would do me so good, some good. So every Sunday, it seemed like, my mother had all these people from Newfoundland come over, and all, everybody would help my mother. They had this big copper kettle, and they'd boil the soup bones up in there, and they, would, they have real greasy hot water, and then sit me in it. Then they would take me out, and wrap me in a blanket and uh, uh, my arms and everything were all enclosed. Then I would sit on my father's lap and he'd feed me and all these people would be singing all those wonderful Newfoundland songs and it was very happy, you know. And then also my mother heard that if you got salt water and brought that in and uh, heated it up or something, and that that would do some good. So of course they went to Wood Island in East Boston, got the salt water, and did went through that routine. And uh, what they do with the salt water? Just put you in it? Yeah, and boil it or something. I don't remember. You know, I just know that they went and brought in salt water, and uh, you know, in the house. And I it, maybe it was winter time or something, and I was in that. They must have heated it up or something. Put me in it. And then again, wrapped me up, you know, right up to the neck. But <clears throat> I had wonderful, wonderful parents, and you know, I always wanted to go coasting like the other kids. And at that time, I was wearing, you know, two big braces and everything. So my father built a sled, and you know, with a little uh, back to it. And then he would put me in that and put a blanket over me with a pillow and everything. And after coming home from a hard day's work, he would uh, pull me up and down the street, you know, so I could say I was out coasting. And, you know, sometimes children can be real mean. And uh, my aunt lived about a block away. And I Which one? Which aunt? My aunt Anna and Uncle Jim. And uh, I had the uh, uh, big, you know, two big braces and the crutches and everything. And I used to try to walk down there, but the, the kids would stone me, throw stones mm. at me and everything. So uh, I couldn't go down there by myself anymore. 
So my aunt used to have to come up and meet me, you know, on the corner so the kids wouldn't stone me. But now how many operations did you have totally on your leg? Ten. Ten. And they finally fixed your foot. When did you In go to the fixed, camp? In uh, a fixed position so you could only go up and down, position. right? Oh, I went to the camp for crippled children up in Green. Three C's camp in? Yeah, in uh, the Green Mountains in Vermont. Oh, I guess I must have been about uh, 12. That was after I uh, had all the operations and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wore a shoe that was built up. And I went up there, and of course I had a wonderful time. And came home and taught... Uh, and taught uh, my brothers and sisters everything I had learned up there, all those songs and all that, you know. Just sing one of them. Um, we are the three sea campers. We are the three sea campers and our homes in USA. We're getting pretty husky now. We're growing every day. Some otters brought us over here beneath the skies of blue and landed us upon a hill to see what we could do. Oh, jolly camp girls, oodly oodly you. Oh, jolly camp girls, oodly 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 oodly. And then you go on again. Go on again. Yeah. And so that's where you learned the, all those songs. We are the three seas girls, as you all know and see. We have the vim and pep to put things across. And when we leave this place, there'll be an empty space. Oh boy, we are the Three C's girls. <clears throat> Can't sing anymore. And what did you do we'll this camp? We'll live for Three C's fame. We'll build for her a name. We'll boost our camp up until it's on top. We'll do our best to shine in our own special line. Oh, ba oh boys, we are the Three C's girls. But then that's where you learned uh, the, the uh, it isn't the any little trouble. Goat. That little goat and it isn't any trouble. Let's do that. Right. Which one? Either one. A little goat was feeling fine. <clears throat> this is too early in the morning for me to be singing. He ate a red shirt off the line. His master then gave him a whack and tied him to the railroad track. Sing I report but not goodbye. This little goat was doomed to die. Tied to the track, he groaned in pain. Coughed up the shirt and flagged the train. Oh, that's the one we love. And then yeah. uh, the the other one, it isn't any trouble. Just sing one verse and then we'll put the rest it in. It isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. It isn't any trouble just to S-M-I-L-E. If you smile when you're in trouble, it will vanish like a bubble. If you only take the trouble just to S-M-I-L-E, then you say grin and spell laugh. And ha ha ha. Okay. And okay. what did you do at this Three C's camp? Because well, we went you know, later years, and and I took you up there and saw it when oh, I was right. there. Yeah. Oh well, we did a lot of crafts. I made an elephant, you know, and filled it with uh, pine needles or something like that. And I called him Cicero Columbus Crusoe, <laughs> and we went swimming. And uh, you know, we had campfires. So that's where songs. you learned how to swim. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, because you, you were one of the few kids in your family that could swim. Right. Uh -huh. Okay, and that's where you learned. Right. And, uh, you know, we had campfires and singing and, oh, did all sorts of different things during the day. So, but what was it like growing up in your family? I mean, what was your mother? You, you talked about your father before, but what about your mother? Let's go back to your mother. Wonderful. Where did she come back? Where did she come from and how many did she have in her family? Well, and I think I told you that. No, you told that of grandfather, but you yeah, didn't but tell I of told mama. You about, I, I heard you say Aunt Bessie. No. Mm -mm. Well, my mother came from Buena Vista Bay, Newfoundland, so, in Southern Bay, and she lived right down on the water, a beautiful, beautiful spot, and she had, uh, she had, uh, let me see, Aunt Bessie, Aunt Rita was the oldest, then Aunt Bessie, and Aunt Celia, and my mother, and then she had uh, brothers, Tom, who died when he was very young, and Uncle Jim and Uncle Pat. Mm -hmm. And I think that was it. And, and tell the story about um, what when she, when she was a little girl, her grandmother didn't want the chickens. Uh, oh, uh, my grandmother was uh, quite a tailor. She used to make men's suit and, suits and everything. And uh, 
What was her they name? Had her what Mary, was your grandma? Mary. Mary Philpot. Mary she Philpot. Did, yeah, that's it. Was English, and um, uh, she didn't like the chickens making a mess around the door, so she made these little leather uh, things to put on their claws so they wouldn't dig up her garden. Dig up the and garden stuff. and the dirt and everything. Yeah. And then uh, what about your 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 mother's name though was McCormick. Yes. It was Mary Philpot and who did she Mary Philpot Mary James McCormick. Okay, so grandmother's name is ja was uh, father's name was gra uh, his her father's name was James. James, yeah. They used to and what did him. he do for a living? Well, I don't know. He was retired when I knew him, you know. And uh, the kids, they had their own apartment over in East Boston, my grandmother and grandfather. And my grandmother had had a stroke, so my grandfather took care of her. And Your he, father took care of her? My grandfather. Oh. My grandfather, Jim, my mother's father, uh -huh. took care of his wife. Oh, okay. And he baked the bread and all that stuff and everybody. But I thought I thought your father and mother took care of somebody's and parents. And my mother. Oh. And my grandmother. Uh -huh. Then when, when, when my grandmother's husband, my grandfather died, then my mother and father took well, wait, care of Wait, I'm confused her. then. What was your mother's father's name? James McCormick? Yes. Okay. So yeah. James and Mary. McCormick. James and Mary McCormick, right. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, uh, they, uh, like I said, they had their own house over okay. in East Boston. But how did grandmother get to Boston? How did grandmother get to Boston to begin with? How well, old was she? I, I have no idea. I have no you have idea. no idea how your mother got to Boston? Oh, my mother, yeah. but not my grandmother and right. grandfather. No, oh, your mother. I, I don't know. She just came up on the train, I guess. You don't and remember the story of her coming in the, no, no, in the, no. she came in the middle of summer and she had on her winter outfit and fur and everything and no, I don't, uh, remember, don't that. remember that. No. All right. So what do you remember about your mother then? How was she when you were growing up? She came up and uh, she came to this country and she uh, lived in a boarding house with Mrs. Bay, Jim and um, Mrs. Fahey they called her and Mr. Fahey was my godfather and my father lived there too. Because you know, they were all Canadians, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was the thing then, all these other... And how did your mother meet your father? But I think, didn't I tell you that on the other tape? Oh, my father was a real good-looking man, and he very quiet, and he had a room at Mrs. Faden's house, and he used to write letters home to his mother and father all the time. And my mother wanted to meet him, but he was so shy, so they had a transom over the door. And my mother just went and got up there and squirted water in at my father. And then he came out and he said, who did that? <laughs> you know, and that's how they met. Can't you turn that off once in a while so I can think? Okay. Say something. Well, can you turn that off a minute? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I'll, I remember my mother saying that, you know, she went to work as a cook, like most of the girls did. And she worked for this Mr. Gardner whose wife had died and he had children and she took care of them. And he wrote the song, Caroline. Hmm. Can't you hear me calling Caroline? Caroline, Caroline. Ain't no use now for the sun to shine. I forget that how it goes like that uh -huh. anyhow, but he wrote that song and he thought my mother made the most delicious muffins and everything. And she, that's what she was known for. And you know, my mother met all those girls from Newfoundland, Mrs. Hallie, and all that. And uh, and they were friends for what 50 oh, years. Oh yes, and my mother.